Hexen. Better ask my nurse. My English is not good enough for me to know. <laughs> that daughter of mine seems to be knocking them cold all the before her time, doesn't she? Knocking them cold? What does it mean? Well, it's just an expression, you know. Luckily, if you didn't catch a death of cold. <laughs> Hello, Louis. Ooh. Good thing you didn't lose your head. <laughs> Sorry I upset you. <laughs> Don't mind, it was a very <laughs> awkward moment. Come along now. <laughs> You've been here quite long enough. <laughs> Well, I think I must go back to the hotel now. Well, no more jumping. No, that was my last chance. Oh, your fault, terrible woman. It wasn't. It was a silly little dog. I might have been killed, you know. You realize that my last day here might have been my last day on Earth. Your last day here? Mm-hmm. You're not leaving tonight, are you, Louis? I'm afraid, yes. By the last train. Oh, Uncle Louis. What do you call me, Uncle? Well, you're just like an uncle, aren't you? <laughs> How <laughs> dare you, miss? We shall miss you, Louis. <laughs> Mum, you'll cry her eyes up. Won't she, Daddy? Yes, dear. You think so? Oh, she adores you. Doesn't she, Daddy? Yes, dear. I'm desolate to go. As it is my last night, would you and your charming wife accept to have dinner with me tonight? Oh, well, she'd love it, both of us. Good. Oh, Uncle Louis. Mm -hmm. I get awfully hungry in the evening. Yeah. Yes, you get awfully sleepy too, darling. Long after your bedtime, my child. Oh, let me sit up. I'll sleep overtime tomorrow. I will ask your mother. Oh, yes, please. Where is Jill? Mm. She's working off the finals of the clay pigeon shooting. I see. I do hope she wins, don't you, Louis? Who's against her? That fellow Raymore. Uh-huh. Well, then she's got to win. Why, don't you like him, Trouble? Do you? Oh, I don't know. He's all right. Bit of a bore. He means well, doesn't he? Why don't you like him? He's got many too many teeth and... and too much brilliant teeth. Sworn enemies, eh? You English have such a sense of humor. Well, I can't say that I hope you'll win. I'm sure that you will. You're so beautiful, so clever. Yes, well, let's get on with it, shall we? Well, are you ready? Mummy, may I stay up tonight? Oh, darling, ask me presents then. Oh, say yes now, just for luck. You little wretch. Look, here's that brooch you wanted. Now will you run away and be quiet? Oh, shh. Daddy, don't you like it? Mummy gave it to no, me. No, shut up, darling. That's all for bricks, huh? Not a baby. Let that be a lesson to you. Never have any children. Well, that's your fault, fathead. It wasn't. Betty. You know your child's going to cost me the match, don't you? Well, she's your child as well as mine, isn't she? Well, if I lose this game, I'll disown it forever. Sorry that you lost, Madame Lawrence, but I am delighted that I won, if you understand. You're a marvelous shot, and I know what I'm talking about. You make me blush. We must have another battle one day, shall we? I shall live for that moment. Well, you would have this child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Madame Lawrence, you English are extraordinary. Ah, my love. Oh, my darling. My lunch. <laughs> you can keep your breath. Thank you. I'm just going off with another man. <laughs> Darling, you go to bed early with Betty. <laughs> Poor Daddy. Sir, you have beaten my wife and she has gone off with another man. You are a dirty dog. <laughs> you are as comical as your charming wife. <laughs>
that mummy sleeping? Yes, right. Tell him what. Bang it over. Go on, Louis. Perform. What do you mean? Do your stuff. Uh, what do you think of the average Englishman? Much too cold. Except when he drinks too much, of course. Is that jumper for him? Of course it is. Did you think it was for you? It's a memento. To wear over my beating heart. Has it been fireproof? Yes, yes. Be a good girl and run after bed. Go on, darling, bus off. It's all right. right. Oh. It's a from outside, outside smash the window. Any letters? Yes, sir. Two. Bob. What's the matter? He's dead. It's horrible. Oh, God. Bob, listen. No, no, no. There's something behind all this. He said you were to go straight to his room. Something about a brush. Here's the key. He gave it to me. Oh, Bob, what can this all mean? Well, we'll, we'll soon find out. Al primo piano, per piacere. Per l'amore di Dio, aprite la porta. Lasciatemi uscire da questa parte. È molto importante. Aprite la porta. Per l'amore del cielo, aprite la porta. Non posso più cantare. Aspettate un momento. Guardate sotto la tavola. No, no, lì sotto. Sotto il letto. Sotto il letto. No, di qui, da questa altra parte. Guarda di qui. Per l'amore di Dio, aprite la porta. Lasciatemi uscire da questa porta. È molto importante. Aprite quella porta. Per l'amore di Dio, aprite. Good evening. Is anything the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. If I were you and if I found something, come on, hand it over. Pardon, sir, but no doubt there is some explanation. Of what? Oh, why? Why are you were in that room? Monsieur Bernard's room. It is irregular. The smooth, the hair are clearing. Not really. Oh, yes, that, 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 that's easy to explain. Anything I can do to help? Can you get the British consul for me on the phone, please? No doubt, but first... Yes, first. I got something very vital to tell him. The British consul? Yes, please. Perhaps it will be better if you will kindly come to my private room for a moment. Yes, of course I will, certainly. Thank you very much.
is the purest formality. Oh, yes, of course, eh? You will pardon me that in my position... Oh, yes, of course, quite all right. This way, sir, please. Oh. I say, you won't forget that I want to speak to the British Consul on the phone, will you? Presently, mein Herr. Certainly, at once, oh, sir. Mario, post the letter. Look here, I must go in there and talk to my wife. I'm very sorry that the commissary wishes to see each one separately. It is formal. Oh, but, you, but you know him well. He was your friend. Yes, he was our friend, but we knew very little of him, hardly any. Oh, excuse me, do you, um... Uh, can you tell me if the British Consul's in town today? Ich verstehe nicht. No, do you, does that, it, um... Uh, can you, uh, the British, the British uh, consul, you know, the man who comes at parcels, is, 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 he, is he here? Herr? Yeah, is that Herr? No, no, I don't mean is he here, a man. I mean, is he, is he here? Here? No. <laughs> uh, listen, is, uh, is he here in Samoritz? <sighs> Look, the British the consul, uh, is there, is he a till EC aujourd'hui? Is it? Oh, damn. I can't remember how far he was standing from the window. Everything was so stopped. Think, madame. Now, look here, you must let me go in there and talk to my wife. But you cannot, sir. The commissary is giving orders, in charge here. What can I do? Please excuse. But, uh, you're... Sie dürfen hier nicht rein. Now, listen. If you don't mind, I must... Was? Herr Lawrence. Please. Oh, thanks very much. It was left at the desk of the hall porter. It was marked very urgent. Thank you. Oh, per l'amore del cielo, andate via. Non senti, mi ha detto. I remember that, madame. Wait a minute. He said you have to go. I'm sorry, but excuse me, I've got a message for my wife. The, uh, the Mitchisons can't come to lunch tomorrow. Yes, we have to wait the other people off, too. What's all this heißen? Ich habe nicht verpasst. What's all this heißen? Nehmen Sie ihn sofort weg. What is that note? Give to me. I have nothing to add to what I've already said, Inspector. Nothing whatever. Oh, it's no use talking like that, Mr. Lawrence. It just won't do. Now, uh, on March the 10th, you and Mrs. Lawrence went to Switzerland. Thank you. Yes. To St. Moritz. Yes. With your little daughter. Yes. Miss Kinsella. Oh, thank you. On March the 19th, you returned to London. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You return to London without your little daughter. Yes. One for you. Thank you. Where is she? Staying with her aunt. Oh, what's his aunt's name? <laughs> Mary. And where is she staying with his aunt? In Paris. Street and number? Uh, it's a rather complicated French name, rather difficult for an English person to remember, I'm afraid. Mm. One for you. By the way, why were you so upset the night you left Switzerland? I'm not aware that I was upset. Was it because your child had been 
kidnapped? And another thing, my point is this. He's not the sort of chap to uh, give things away and lose his head and spill the beans and all that sort of business. See what I mean? When I was in the Navy... Is that train electric? Yes, 20 volts. Best present I ever gave the kid. Doesn't play with it much now, does she? She never did. You never gave her a chance. I say, you mustn't get jumpy, you know. Really, you mustn't. What I mean to say is, uh, well, once you begin that sort of thing, uh, lose grip and... Uh, and... <laughs> I know. I'm all right. Oh, Clive. You've got Pullmans and coal trucks on the same train. Good Lord, I have. Is that your last word, sir? Absolutely. Well, I'm sorry to have to say it, sir, but I don't believe you in that flat. It's your duty as a citizen, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, thanks for calling. You may be sorry. <laughs> don't drop in again. Hello, are you still here? You lost your whistle or something? <laughs> I'm not a policeman. My name's Gibson. I'm secretary to Sir Norman Wood at the Foreign Office. Oh, really? Never heard of him. However, how'd you do? Your friend Louis was one of our people. Special service. You didn't know that, did you? I'm afraid not, no. You didn't happen to find anything in this brush, did you? Nothing much. I'm terribly busy. Yeah, enough to justify somebody kidnapping your child to keep your mouth shut. I never said so. Nonsense. When Louis Bernard was killed, there was a paper in this brush. How terribly thrilling. Darling, you haven't told them anything, have you? Not yet, Mrs. Lawrence, but I think he's just about to. Jill, dear, this is Mr. Gibson of the Foreign Office. Come to see us. How do you do? Oh, I, of course, I quite understand. But I think if you listen to me, you'll appreciate why I have to bother you. Has either of you heard of anyone, a foreign statesman of the name of Roper? Roper, I don't think so, have we, Dave? R-O-P-A, Roper. No. Oh, well, if you haven't heard of him, I suppose it doesn't worry you much if he's likely to be assassinated. What's that got to do with us? Well, patience, Mrs. Lawrence, and I think you'll see. Louis Bernard was killed because he knew of a plot to assassinate Roper. A few hours later, your child was kidnapped. Why? Because by that time, you were in possession of that vital information. It was written on the piece of paper you found in Bernard's shaving brush. Mr. Lawrence, Roper is in London and an attempt may be made on his life. My department must protect him. Now, will you tell me what was on that piece of paper? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't. But I can tell you what is written on another piece of paper. That our child had been kidnapped. And if we spoke, we'd never see her again. It's her life against this fellow Roper's. Why should we care if some foreign statesman we'd never even heard of were assassinated? Tell me, in June 1914, had you ever heard of a place called Sarajevo? Yes. Of course you hadn't. I doubt if you'd even heard of the Archduke Ferdinand. But in a month's time, because a man you'd never heard of killed another man you'd never heard of, in a place you'd never heard of, this country was at war. But uh... Don't tell him, Bob. I'm sorry, Mr. Gibson, but we're not interested. What you've told us may be true, but our child's in danger. That comes first. It must come first. You see that, don't you? Mrs. Lawrence, do you realize the type of man we're dealing with? Do you think they draw the line at murder? Besides, how do you know the child's alive? How do you know he hadn't... Someone on the phone in the hall. It's about... about Betty. 
Switch it through here, will you? All right, I will. Hello? Good afternoon, Mr. Lawrence. Please listen very carefully. We don't want to interrupt your chat with the gentleman from the Foreign Office, but we think we ought to remind you that if you tell him anything of what you know, you will never see your child again. Just a final warning. Yes, but I, I want to... Uh, Bob, what is it? I don't know, somebody playing the fool or something. Hello? If you think somebody's fooling you, perhaps you'd like to speak to the child yourself. Betty. Hello, my darling. Hello, Mother. Is that you? Are you all right? Yes, Mommy. Plenty to eat? Ask her where she is. Yes, Mommy. How are you getting on without me, Mommy? I'm missing you terribly, darling. Uncle Clive and I have been... been playing with your train. Ask her where she is. Oh, Mommy, I want to come home. So you shall, darling. Very soon. Ask her where she is. I'll come and fetch you. Darling, where are you? Mommy, come here, Betty. Darling? Betty! <laughs> oh, steady, old girl, steady. Did either of you recognize the first voice that spoke? Oh, for God's sake! I'm sorry, but can't you leave us alone? I say, wouldn't it be possible to trace that call? No, it's no good. The telephone people would never tell. Hello? Uh, give me special, please, quickly. Hello? Uh, this is G speaking. Were you listening? Where did the last call to this number come from? Whopping? Public call box. Notify Scotland Yard to have a plainclothes man posted on every corner of the district. Well, get them from other districts. Whopping, does that convey anything to you? Nothing whatever. Well, if there is any trouble, I hope you remember you're to blame. Not a very nice thing to have on your conscience. All right, Baba, I'll see you, Mark. Ask Lawrence to talk to you over the game when I'm gone. You know where to ring me if you want me? Yes, thanks. Goodbye. Clive, here a minute. Yes? Are you coming? Where to? Whopping. Of course. Look here, I'll get our hats and coats and things. Why? You know those plain clothes men that Gibson ordered? If these blokes have got Betty to see them, they'll think we've given them away. Our only chance is to act ourselves. Double quick. Oh, I'm coming, no, too. No, 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 darling. You stay here. Keep on the end of that telephone. If there's any news, we'll get through to you. Oh, darling, I can't risk losing mm. both, both of you. <laughs> oh, by your nose. Won't lose either of us. What about your food? Oh, leave me a bone on the mat. Here, do you want this? <laughs> well, you know, there can't be many George Barbers in Wapping. I couldn't think of another one in that pub, anyway. Come on, let's go. Look, what? Are they plain clothes men over there? All right, come along. Here we go. Yeah, just a minute. Come on. I think these things are all right, eh? Yeah, I think so. You look terrible. I think Clive. Any questions asked, but just not a vote. Good idea. When I was in the Navy... Buy your teeth. Uh, hmm? It seems a pity. Come on. Let's have a dash, boy. I know. My pal here has got rather bad toothache. Ah, uh, I look at it.
Poor old boy. Five shillings. Five shillings. Give him five shillings for me, will you please? Oh. Just a minute. Uh, better have a look at mine while we're about it. What's wrong? Oh, I've had terrible toothache today. Have a look at him, will you? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you stay outside and keep your mouth shut. Has she arrived? Not yet. Just off the ship? Yeah. Which one? Saxon. Hmm. She's not due until tomorrow. Oh, no, I... I got off at, um, I got off at Tilbury. Came on by train. Tough skipper, old Turner. Not half. Left her last voyage. <laughs> yes, of course, that's right. I... <laughs> what I meant was... I was wrong. The voyage before last. Yes, of course. <laughs> it slipped my memory. Nothing much wrong with your teeth. No, I think you're right. Not hurting as much as it was. I'll be off. Wait. Why, what's the trouble? There's one there, better come out. I think I'll chop it down. Yeah, doesn't the doctor have to do that? Has he come? So, there you are. At a good crossing? No. Sick all the way. It is the last time I let myself be smuggled into this country. For you or anybody else. You will be smuggled, my friend, when, how and where I'm pleased for you to be smuggled. Yes? It's your fault for having such a wonderful aim. It's your gun. You must pay the price of your genius. Everything ready for tonight? I have arranged the box for you. Most conveniently placed. Any trouble with the charming Miss Lauren? It's quiet, little mouse. And where is the little mouse now? Oh, in a little, a little hole in the ground somewhere. You shall see. Your last job tonight? No, first. Look, 
side. Which way they go? Where's Betty? Found out anything? Yes. Shall I give you the ring? No, no, come along. Hurry. Uh -huh. Sun worshippers. Probably we've got nothing on. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Yeah. Perhaps those who may be among us tonight for the first time and who have not yet become initiated into the mysteries of the first circle of the sevenfold ray may be wondering what is going to happen now. I will tell them, before proceeding to the mysteries which are only for the initiate, it is of course necessary for the minds and souls of us all to become purged and to be made clean. I'm therefore going to ask anyone here who is not in tune with us to submit to a very simple process of control. Merely place him or herself under the guidance of the fourth circle. Is there anyone here tonight who would care? Perhaps you. Relax. Keep your eyes fixed on this light. Keep them fixed. Before receiving the first degree of the sevenfold ray, your mind must be white and blank. You are already feeling sleepy. Do you hear me? Yes. 
Your mind is becoming quite blank. You feel that, don't you? Quite, quite blank. Yes. Quite blank. I think that will do for the moment. Will all those who are not of the fourth circle please leave as quietly as possible? You're not going to leave your friend, sir, are you? Hello. Good evening. I hope you weren't very rough with him. You see, he's subject to apoplexy. Who? Who? Who were old George Barber down at Wapping? Is it all right in here? <laughs> Thank you. I ought to have mentioned it to you, perhaps. You should learn to control your fatherly feelings and not drop things on the floor, please. Mm. Collected our brother's little offering yet? Have you? Oh, sir, I forgot. Pardon me. Dangerous. Perhaps you would care to join our little circle now, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah? No, thank you very much. Oh, excuse me. Why, well, if it isn't our friend the sharpshooter. Nice to see you again, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. Nice to see you. Well, is my young daughter all ready to go home yet? Oh, no, sir. She's asleep. Uh... No shooting. You don't want the police here, do you? Stop playing that organ, or they'll hear this noise outside.
sorry. Please forgive me. Get on to Mrs. Lawrence. Tell her if she goes to the Albert Hall tonight, her child is... Come on. Yeah, let me get it out! Oh. Mr. Lawrence, please. Hello? Hello. Clive! L listen, Joe. You know that chap we've been looking for? Yes. A hall. It isn't a chap at all. No, it's the real hall. Albert Hall. The Albert Hall? Betty, well, we're on to her, all right. Listen, Bob says you ought to go to the Albert Hall. Now? Y yes, now. You ought to do what you can. That's where it's happening. You know. You ought to stop it. Oh, but... but where? No, 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 no time now. Must get off with the police. Is that Mrs. Lawrence? Mrs. Lawrence? I'm afraid she's just this minute gone out. Will that be all for tonight, sir? No. I shall want you to stay. Yes? I'd rather go now, sir. My husband wants his supper. Besides, I don't want to be mixed up in any nasty business. Rawlings. Hello. See that Mrs. Prockett stays, huh? See to it. Are these poisoned? <laughs> <laughs> have a drink? Thanks very much. I have a gin and French. <laughs> Is this where you write your sermon? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> we can arrange to deal with it in some other way. It's my pal with the cops. If he worries you, gentlemen, shoot and give him a bad leg. No one will hear. So long. This gentleman is in a great trouble tonight. Nothing of the kind, officer. My pal has a little girl. At least he hasn't now. That's the whole point. He came down here to look for her. And these chaps, I, I mean this fellow here, that they're, they're crooks, officer. He's a little intoxicated, officer. The, I, I, his friend was busy enough, but he's worse, isn't he, sister? He's constantly creating scenes in his church. I should look here, the pair of you. Disorderly behavior and a sacred edifice. Is that what we want to charge you with? No, no. Alas, yes. Uh, we don't wish to press it, officer, but, uh, but we've been very patient, haven't we, sister? Oh, but d d damn it, I... Now, what are you going to say for yourself? Uh, look here. Uh, tonight, my friend and I...
Where are they? Who? Well, the whistle. The whistle that was blowing just now. Oh, yes. The arm of the English law needed help in taking our friend to the station. Very, very reluctantly, I've given him in charge. The disorderly behavior in a sacred edifice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot. The little one. Shall she join us? You mean Betty? Hmm. One of the sweetest children I ever met. Bring her, please. You know, to a man with a heart as soft as mine, he has nothing sweeter than a touching scene. Such as? Such as a father saying goodbye to his child. <laughs> Yeah, goodbye for the last time. What could be more touching than that? I'm afraid if you expect a scene from me, you're going to be disappointed. We shall see. Why do you look at me like that? Betty! Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> You all right, darling? Yeah. I say, darling, <clears throat> your smart dressing gown. Where'd you get it? Hmm? Up here. Betty. Betty, I want to tell you something. Here, boy. Listen, your school reports come. It's awfully good. Is it really? Where's Mummy? Now come on, tell her. At the Albert Hall, my dear. Oh, that reminds me. Your scene was so charming, I was almost forgetting. What is it? Record of the delightful piece which they are playing at the Albert Hall tonight. Charming, yes? Mm, what of it? Oh, yes, I forgot. Music is less in your line than marksmanship. If you listen, my dear Raymond, I'll show you the exact moment at which you can shoot. Now listen carefully. at such a moment, your shot will not be heard. I think the composer would have appreciated that. No one will know. Except for one. Huh? Ah. If you are clever, my friend. Come, you must start soon. It's impolite to be late for a concert. And tell Mrs. Lawrence, her little Betty and her husband are very well. Anything else? Tell her they may soon be leaving us. Leaving us for a long, long journey. How is it that Shakespeare says? From which no traveler returns. Great poet.
Follow that car. You come with me. We have to apologize to listeners for the delay which has occurred in the broadcast of the concert from the Albert Hall. An attempt has been made to assassinate the distinguished European diplomat, Monsieur Roper, who is attending the concert. Attempt? We are happy to say, however, 
that the shot fired merely caused a slight flesh wound in Monsieur Roper's shoulder and he has been able to return home. We are now taking listeners back to the Albert Hall for the rest of the concert which has already started. It must have been that damn woman screaming. Were you followed here? No one saw me leave the building. I couldn't have been followed. I hope you are right for your own sake. For dear little Betty's. Looks like an all-night job to me. Baker? Listen, Baker. I want you to go across to their front door and knock. Once that door's open, see that it stays open till we get across. Do you understand? Yes, sir. about that house? What about the child? Any idea if she's inside? I know no more than you do. God, I hope not. All I know is they went to Wapping because my husband said... What's up? We've got orders to clear these streets. I've got orders to clear my box. I can't do anything against it with a revolver, so I've sent to try and raise some rifles. Where from? There's a gunsmith a few streets away, sir. I've sent the lorry. It's the rifle, sir. Good. Put the men in the house opposite at the same level. Get in by the back door. Very good, sir. You take charge of the firing party. I'll right. send the men into you. And clear the people out of the houses you occupy. Very good, sir. Where's your backyard? Through the kitchen, this way. Sergeant, bring a couple 
men next door on the ground floor. I'll take the rest in here. Come on, who's right? Who's this? I'm afraid you'll have to shift your family out of here. I ain't married. All the better for you. Now you wait out here. It'll be safer. We've got business inside. Much better if you waited outside, you know. I'm going to come in to see if everything was all right. Stop that. This is a scrap, not a smoking concert. That pen will make a nice rest. Let's move it over. Good go and come away from that window. You'll get killed. Oh. You've got to get out of this room. The police want to come in. Take it here, Nixon. Don't touch that blind till you're in position. When you hear my whistle, open fire. Yes, sir. I'd better take that mattress across, give you a bit of cover. I've come straight off point duty. I could do with a bit of a sleep on that myself. Still warm, too. Yeah, it's, uh, tell your missus about sir. Are you ready? Wait a minute. Somewhere through to the house. Try all these doors. Come on, boys. Try the doors. They're locked, sir. Look, sir. I'll smash them in. Go on, break them right down. Go on. More ammunition wanted. All right, get it.
finish. I don't go on. You took this on for our cause and you've got to go through with it. We ought to have taken a chance. We ought to have shot our way out. I never ordered the first policeman to be shot. Now we'll have to try and you the child. Go and fetch her. Yes? I keep her close. Then if they get me, they get her too. They're scarcely replying to our fire at all now, sir. My God, look at that. Betty! Stop them firing. Quick, get that man. I didn't, sir. Might hit the kitty. <laughs> Come on, you're all right. Here's Mummy, look. It's all right. 